State Water Board notice of violation. On page three, it states the LDPCSD spreadsheets indicated that 34 parcels were served outside the POU as defined by the LDPCSD from 2013 to 2015. And 35 parcels outside the POU were served in 2016. Now, as I recall, the board tried to uh, rescind resolution 2013-4, which prohibited further service outside the POU. That was not rescinded, and to my knowledge, is still in effect. So by virtue of this statement by the State Water Board, it appears as though either the GM or the board, or the GM and the board, decided to ignore 2013-4, uh, which raises a number, number of questions. I mean, especially since there was an attempt to repeal it to begin with, which meant there was an obvious reason to repeal it. It wasn't successful. So it seems as though there's some sort of an end run around to violate it without the public knowing. At least that's what it looks like on the surface. I put in a uh, agenda request for next month on this issue. And some of the things I would like to see discussed is exactly how this happened. Since it, it, to my knowledge, it never occurred in a public meeting, so it must have been outside a public meeting. If it was rescinded, and if it was, it appears to be a Brown Act violation. If it wasn't, it's just a violation of our resolution. But I think some important things is uh, where the property is located, which county, or it's in both counties, uh, who the owners are, what is the anticipated water use, is it residential, commercial, agricultural, whatever? And what the anticipated groundwater substitution demand will be. Let's see. Because I think I have a number of tapes where both the board and the general manager have assured the public repeatedly that there would be no additions to this mandatory compliance reporting, and yet the state apparently believes there has been. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, the rest of it's contained in my agenda request, but it's, it was stamped and filed this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It would seem like that, <clears throat> I don't remember what dates he said, you just go look and see that date and see that date, and whatever date he's talking about, there should be a new name, right? I mean, because it's every month down here. No, because that's when the, the uh, outside POU report was in, it was out, it wasn't there, it was out, MID refused any knowledge of it. It's a whole complicated thing. Everybody's denying that it existed. Okay. Thank you very much. Who, what year was that? Huh? What year was that at this year? 16. Okay, this year. Right. I'll go back and look. Could it be as simple as a, as a, as a connecting but no demand going to a demand? I think mean, that be a clarification. I think that's the best way to go for Well, you're going to have to clarify for the state anyway. Yeah. Might as well tell us to. Thank you. Okay. All right. I have nothing to uh, communicate to the board or the, or the public, so I'll go ahead and ask the group to present his report. There's, oh wow, boy, I just broke that off with my fingernail. How did you do that? Uh, there's not a separate uh, manager's report. The majority of the um, the actions that we're dealing with today are, have pretty much taken up the entire amount of time. Um, and uh, so I wanted to specifically report on two items, which were the, the leak protection services and the, the new laws for 2018. Um, and first off, the leak detection services uh, contractors come in, met their targets on, on what they had intended to get done. They needed to get 150 connections looked at every day. Um, and they did meet that objective. They uh, have asked for a week delay in the completion. Um, in exchange, that's giving us an opportunity to, to help them locate some of these services. There's They've gone through the entire system except for about 160 uh, services that they can't find. Did you say did or did not? Did, did or did not what? You said that they did or did not complete whatever. I catch they, they have completed they looking did. at all of the services that they could find and that were on our maps. Uh, there were about 100.
160 that they have not been able to locate yet because they're not uh, not apparent, not not apparent visible. Um, obviously, not metered connections, probably just serving two vacant lots. Um, <clears throat> so that uh, they, they've asked to come back to the job on the week of I believe it's December 4th. Um, and then they have just a few more days to wrap it up and then they'll be preparing a formal report. Um, but what they have located is a couple of illegal connections and uh, one connection that was running uh, through a meter, but the meter wasn't registered uh, to a vacant parcel. So really kind of uh, a lot of water loss occurring in a couple of places that unless we were walking around and <coughs> Danny and I shared some some concepts about in, in the future how to how to deal with this, but uh, water that uh, has been coming out of the system for a while, we should really no way to tell. Uh, but we'll we'll follow up on those uh, illegal connections and, and pursue those uh, in in any way that we can, if it's if it's possible, and then. Uh, they also located 21 additional services that were uh, leaking, you know, to varying degrees at this point. Um, the hard thing is they're not always leaking, uh, you, you know, and, and then a week later they come on a couple more times and they start to leak, you know. And once they start leaking, they don't stop, but... Um, How do they determine there's a leak? Uh, by listening to them. Oh, on the thing on the ground. On the meter, on the, um, uh, the in the meter box. Yeah, but the leak is before the meter, right? Yeah, but, but you can but hear. Can I talk to the guy? Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I actually met the guy. Yeah. Um, he was, it just happened to be out in front of my house when I was driving out. And I said, oh, you're the leak guy. And he said, yeah. And he has little headphones on his little thing. And it looked like he starts at the meter box. Mm -hmm. He listens there. And then if he hears something, he goes backwards. I see. He said, he, he did tell me that uh, I think I saw him on day three, oh, wow. mm -hmm. and uh, he said he had found some leaks. He had suspected possibly some leaks in the mains and laterals and different things, but um, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for what he was doing, and he said he could definitely hear if water was coming out of those pipes. Um, so I, I, I got a really good sense that he did a pretty good job. Um, and it was because he talked about tracing it back 100 feet and different things, just trying to pinpoint where leaks were, and sometimes he couldn't. So, Have you received a formal report yet? No, they, no. Have a, they still have to do uh, about 160 of them. Oh, okay. Um, but that's what gives us more time to, to go out there. We know which ones need to be located and, and put a stake or paint the road or whatever, so that when he goes out, he can test those. Um, and also, uh, <clears throat> it, he said that he would be about a week to put the report together. So by mid December, we'll have the report. So by the next meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I got to ask what, what is our policy on the illegal connections? Uh, discontinue them, turn them over to the Sheriff's Department, and uh, uh, we have the ability in our ordinance or in our uh, water rules and regulations to collect on the amount of water, but uh, you know, we kind of hard to hard, hard to estimate sometimes how long it's been running. You can make some assumptions, but you know, I know legally too. If you know, you first of all have to find out how much water was going out of it if you can, or if the, if the valve was turned on, it was running full force or whatever. And if there's theoretically no controls, was it running 24/7? And you can also go back, not just for that, but if you know who the owner is, if you can prove it is, you can go after them legally. I mean, that's a huge crime. And we, we did it yeah. for with electricity, but it's, it's a little bit harder since we have no record, no customer of the record. Yeah, and many times the property owners who's on hook for the bill is not the one who right. is occupying yeah. the property and growing the plant. Right, right. You know, so. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it, those need to be uh, followed up on, and if there is someone that we can bill, you know, if there's a decision that we have to take something up legally, then we'll, we'll have a conversation with the session. But uh, the, um, it's going really well. That, again, that report will be part of, uh, that 
is the final document that goes along with the plans and specs to go out to bid on that. We remember we approved going out to bid, but then we put it on hold to get this report so that we can send the contractor there first. And, uh, and from there, <coughs> we're, um, um, that way the contractor knows exactly what they're bidding on. They, they'll know the exact number of service lines and their locations. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to locate the, the, uh, the next report. The uh, California Special Districts Association, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on this, but one of the real benefits of, of membership in that association is the fact that they've got full-time lobbyists on staff. They follow this stuff. Uh, sometimes they introduce legislation, but usually it's responding to other people's uh, legislation, other authors that may not understand special districts or have had a bad experience or have had, you know, um, something that they really want to take care of in, in, the, in terms of legislation. And they uh, put the bill together, and then when it gets circulated, then CSDA is all over it. They'll review it, they'll go out to the members and ask questions. There's legislative task forces because sometimes they'll ask questions that are um, outside the experience of um, some districts as far as construction, the public works stuff. And um, in reality, it's, it's really good to get this input because some of these bills would have just been an absolute disaster. Um, and a lot of them just have to do with procedural matters. Uh, LAFCA is, we are one of the minority counties that don't have representation on LAFCO. Tuolumne County, same way. Um, it is not uh, a really big deal unless you're having a lot of district uh, boundary things coming up or controversial issues related to your district boundaries or, or things like that. Uh, not place of use, not any of that, but the, the actual boundary and the sphere of influence. Typically related to growth. Uh, it used to be, or, or as of about 10 years ago, I think it was, uh, LAFCO um, changed their laws to allow special districts to be at the table because it's LAFCO is two members of the city council two members of the Board of Supervisors and one public member, okay? And they take up issues about boundaries and services. Um, and then you can now add in special districts, so two special districts, two city, two county, and then a public member. Um, in the case of Mariposa, they, since they don't have a city, they have county and they have a public member. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, but districts can get involved and be on that decision-making body by submitting a resolution. Every district in the county has to submit a resolution and then they have a selection committee and then they put their people on it. Um, and it was really cumbersome. You got all the big counties and then it stopped. The little counties, in many cases, don't have that representation. And uh, so they made it easier. You can, you can get to be on that uh, with a much simpler process now. Um, just a majority instead of everybody. And not, I'm not advocating for it now, but if it ever becomes an issue in the future, that might be, might be worthwhile. But it just was one of those things that CSC wanted to do. Um, 